What is the cost of living in the Philippines 2023? We're going to be honest. We're going to talk about some of the factors that are, are affecting the Philippines in particular. Uh, you've got inflation at a little over 8%. The last I read, uh, walking through a uh, housing subdivision over in on Mactan Island at the present time. And uh, we're going to get into some real specifics and kind of a worksheet type, type thing. So first of all, what is your budget? How much money do you have? How much money, how much income do you have on a monthly basis? You're not going to be spending dollars or euros or, or pounds or uh, whatever currency of your home country here. You're going to be spending Filipino pesos. So we're going to break it down into pesos. And that means the, the varying exchange rates with your currency and the Philippine peso is going to be a big factor on how much money you have here. When I came here in 2015, the exchange rate was 45.5 pesos per U.S. dollar. It has fluctuated, and I've done videos where I've showed the graphs for a number of different uh, currencies. Uh, it's gone up as high as about 58 pesos, uh, record amount, 58 pesos per uh, U.S. dollar. It's hovered around 50 pesos per U.S. dollar uh, for some time. And uh, anyway, I'm going to use the figure of 50 pesos to the U.S. dollar and figure out the average. The average retiree gets about 1,500 U.S. dollars a month in their, their Social Security pension. And I know other countries have different figures. So take your figure, write it down, get, get a pad and paper, write it down and uh, multiply multiply your guaranteed monthly income uh, by 50 it, it's a it's a safe number it might go below that uh, or whatever your your country's currency is whatever the rate is so uh, 50 times 1500 us dollars is 75000 pesos that you would have to spend every month uh, if, if you're only making around, let's say, 1,000 U.S. dollars, that's 50,000 uh, pesos you have to spend each month. And I definitely suggest you don't spend all that money every month, that you put some of that into savings. Again, we're doing a worksheet for your budget. Now, many of the experts say you shouldn't, should only spend around 30% of your income on housing, on rent housing payments, whatever. And of course, in reality, with uh, the price of houses going up around the world, uh, many people spend as much as half of their income. But anyway, let's take that figure, 75,000 pesos or 50,000 pesos, whatever, whatever your peso income is per month, multiply it that times 30% uh, to give you a figure, and that uh, this comes out to 22,500 pesos and you need to you need to understand your budget you need, you need to understand your limitations with your budget and you need to stick with your budget now the biggest thing affecting rental prices here in the philippines well there's two things two big things that are affecting the rental prices the so-called pandemic of the last three years uh, where millions of tourists went back to their home countries and uh, because of the travel restrictions, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of condo units, hotel units, re resort units uh, have been sitting vacant uh, for these past, much of these past three years. Now we're seeing a few more people here in Cebu City. We've got the big, it's January, we've got the big, uh, large Sinalog Festival going on, so there's there's quite a number of, of uh, tourists who have come in from various countries, America, Korea, various countries, uh, but not nearly as many as, as in the past before the so-called pandemic. So there are still uh, thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of units sitting empty. Um, if you're looking to rent a condo, apartment, uh, a house, it's all available. The important thing to you is to understand your budget and to control your budget and to spend within your budget. Because if you don't, 
trust me, uh, you're going to find yourself, you're going to find yourself uh, in trouble financially. I've got over a thousand videos up. I've done a lot of videos of uh, condominiums, of subdivisions. What do you get? What do they cost? What do they rent for? What do they sell for? Um, and you can go through those videos. And a lot of that was pre-pandemic. So oftentimes the prices uh, are lower, 10, 20, 30, 40% lower than, than they were previously. And there are motivated, there are some motivated landlords who will negotiate. There are some who will not negotiate, who want the higher prices. So it's up to you to stick within your, for 22000 23000 you should be able to get a, a very nice studio condo or a, uh, at least, at the very least, an, an, an average, a, a, a good, decent one-bedroom condominium, for instance. There are cheaper units that you can find, even in Cebu City. Ask the locals. You won't find them online, usually. And if they are online, they'll usually go very fast at, at the very low cost. Anything uh, below, we'll say, 12,000 pesos a month will probably get caught up pretty, pretty rapidly. Generally, what you need when you rent a condominium apartment, they'll ask for one month's rent, the first month's rent, and two months security deposit. Now that's not always the case, but that's very common here. So if you rented a place for 20,000 or 20, let's say 22,000 pesos a month, you would have to come up with three times that amount, 66,000 pesos, and this is a cash uh, economy still, so you would have to come up with that in, in pesos. If you'd have to go to the bank several times perhaps to get that amount. Another cost uh, related to your housing, uh, your, your rent is uh, electric and water is usually not included in your rental price. And my observation and experience is that uh, if, if you use a fan a lot, I've got a couple friends who usually use the fan and no air, very little air conditioning. And their air, electric may run, um, may run 2,000 pesos up to 6,000 pesos. Uh, you know, two, two to three thousand if, if you're very frugal with your electric usage. And I've talked to people who are up around uh, five, six thousand for electric for maybe a one bedroom, two bedroom. And I run into a guy once uh, had a one bedroom, 45 square meters, uh, less than 500 square feet. And he ran his, he liked it cold, and he ran his air con constantly day and night and he had a bill about 10,000 pesos. Now while I'm talking about uh, about rentals also there there's another fee that you may incur and that is condo fees. Now generally uh, my experience is condo fees are usually but not always included in your rental price. It's important that you understand that and get that clarified ahead of time um, because uh, condo fees can run anywhere from um, a low of 40, but they're usually closer between 70 and 100. Uh, it's more common in the higher end units, even up to 150 pesos per square meter. And that can add up to several thousand pesos extra also. Internet and cable may or may not be included in your rent. Uh, there again, you need to clarify that. Uh, you can get internet. Uh, usually you have to sign like a two-year contract. I actually put a 5,000 peso down so I didn't have to sign a contract, but that is, I'm forfeiting that. I, I never get that deposit back. Um, in, in the end, I've had that service over two years, so it would have been okay for me to sign a two-year contract. There are a number of internet companies in, in different regions, so I'm not going to try to go into the different plans, but generally uh, you can get internet, and you can get data on your phone too and use the internet on your phone. Generally, you can get an internet service plan for a condominium for, for around 1,000 pesos a month. And you go up, I pay about 16 or 1,700 a month for a little bit faster speed. And you can go, depending upon the place, if the place has fiber cable, and most of the, most of the places built in the last seven, seven eight years have, have fiber cable now, but not all. And you can, you can pay more to get faster speeds. Uh, depending on the company. 
food costs are a very personal choice. Depends on what you eat, how much you eat, how often you eat, and uh, where you shop. Um, you know, I, I shop. I've been shopping more and more at the public markets. I can I can save a lot of money by going to the public markets. The the vegetables and fruits are usually much fresher. Also, I've done many uh, uh, cost of living videos over the last seven years, and generally my my food costs are about two hundred and fifty. U.S. dollars and about 50 U.S. dollars, which is 300, about 15,000 U.S., about 15,000 Philippine pesos a month. Now, if you have a girlfriend, a wife, and, and family members, it's going to cost you substantially more. They're, again, depending upon uh, what you eat. I've had people tell me their bar bill was more than my food bill. <laughs> I also buy bulk a lot. I buy larger like containers of uh, extra virgin olive oil, uh, bulk containers of various things that last me many, many months. Uh, so I've got to extrapolate those costs out over the number of, of months instead of just a monthly cost. Don't eat out that much. I, I prefer eating in most of the time. I would say, uh, on average, if you're if you're frugal and you don't eat that much and you you're, you're not out buying the more expensive things, and uh, you can probably get by on ten thousand pesos a month, about two hundred U.S. Uh, but most people are going to spend more than that, I think. Um, Fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand. There again, know what your budget is and uh, penciled out. It, 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 you're always going to spend more than you think. You're going to buy little incidental things. And don't, don't forget about your personal items, tooth, toothpaste and toothbrushes and all your personal hygiene matters as well. Your immigration costs will vary a little bit depending upon what type of uh, visa you're on, of course. But we're talking about tourist visa in particular here. I will always figure it's going to cost me about uh, 1,500 pesos a month. And uh, so I usually do a two-month extension or a six-month extension. And uh, so two months is about 3,000. And then after six months, you're required to apply for an ACR card, Alien Certificate of Registration card, which is they, they charge 500 U.S., so depending on the exchange rate. That's about 25,000 pesos. Um, so it comes out with adding that in and, and yearly uh, for one year, ACR card, once a year, each year, uh, comes out to about 3,600 a month and just rounded off to 4,000 pesos a month uh, because you're going to have transportation costs. And there again, depending on if you're coming from the province in, it might cost you more than the 4,000 pesos a month to travel to immigration. And there again, this is a cash society. They don't take credit cards. They don't take checks. So you need cash when you show up in immigration. I'll be doing another video very shortly about uh, doing your annual check-in uh, during, uh, during January and February on most visas, uh, not tourist visas, but most every other visa, you need to do an annual check-in. And I'll do an update on that shortly. You're probably going to uh, want a cell phone when you're here in the Philippines. And you can buy a cell phone here, cheap one or expensive one. They sell them all, or you, you can bring one. I, I brought a dual SIM, a phone with two SIM cards, so that I could put uh, a SIM card from two different carriers, from Globe and from Smart, in my phone. And there's a third carrier here now, too, called Dito, D-I-T-O. You, you need an unlocked phone. You need a phone that is not uh, permanently connected to your carrier uh, from whatever country that you're residing in. Now, you can find, and I did find someone, to unlock one of my U.S. phones uh, that was attached to a carrier back in the U.S. Uh, but it did affect the performance a bit. Um, you can get it, and I've had guys say, well, they couldn't find anybody that, that could. In fact, they told me originally, they said, no, we're, we're not. They tried different software. They said, we're not able to do it, but then pop, uh, it, it came through, and, and I was, it was able to unlock my phone. I was able to uh, put the Philippine SIMs in. 
As far as the cost, most of you will buy prepaid. You, you pay before you use it. You will buy, sorry about the shaky video there. Um, you will pay a certain amount. You buy load. You'll buy credits for your phone. And uh, it's not that difficult to do, but initially you're just going to have somebody do it. You're going to give somebody your phone number or your phone, and, and they're going to, to add load, add credits to your phone to use. I would suggest you write down in your budget about a thousand pesos a month. You can get into promos and stuff where it costs you less than that. But uh, it's better to overestimate than to underestimate for this budget. So if you've got a paper and pencil, I hope you're writing some of these numbers down. Uh, I would put down 1,000 pesos for a cell phone per month. No doubt you're going to have monthly costs, or at least uh, over the course of a year, so average it out by the month. You're going to have costs for pharmacy, over-the-counter stuff, pay, perhaps prescription items. I know many foreigners who have prescription items. Some uh, try to get them shipped from their home country. I know a Brit who finally gave up on that, and he orders everything uh, here in the Philippines delivered uh, from a, a, a local pharmacy company. And uh, so that's that's real personal, and, and uh, I spend a minimum of a, of a thousand pesos a month on over-the-counter type stuff. I'm fortunate that I don't take any prescription medications unless I have some sort of infection. I get an antibiotic uh, occasionally, maybe average once a year, something like that. They have name brand drugs and they have generic drugs uh, for many items. Some prescription drugs are more expensive here uh, than they are back in your home country. Uh, if you want to check, just uh, I would suggest messaging or emailing the various drug companies here, pharmacy companies, and, and tell them uh, you're interested in prices for a certain number of drugs. You might be able to find prices on their, on their online site as well, not sure. But my guess is that you're going to spend as much or a little more here than you do in your home country uh, for your prescription drugs. Just my just talking to various people. Entertainment is also a very personal choice. Uh, are, are, are you a party person? Are, are you out many times each week? I know, I know guys, expats, who are out every night of every week, virtually, and spending, uh, I mean, that adds up. That adds up, even, even if you don't drink a lot. Uh, it adds up <laughs> over the course of weeks and months. So you need to come up with a, a number there, like a beer here when I came in 2015, a beer at a place with entertainment on Mango Avenue cost me 40 pesos a beer. Uh, it's now, most places, it's at least 80 pesos. You know, they have happy hour certain times, early, early evening. Uh, some of them are maybe 65 uh, during happy hour. Um, hard drinks, uh, 150 to a little over 200 pesos for a hard drink, depending on what you're drinking. I suggest you think about that and, and put a number in your budget and stick to your budget. If you do other things for entertainment, whatever your hobby is, uh, movies, movies, diving, traveling, and that brings up travel costs. When I first came here, I budgeted $100, about 5,000 pesos, 5,000 pesos a month to travel. In reality, uh, that's not how it worked. I, I would travel every other month or every third month and spend a little more than that. Um, so I would, I would say, think about that. Are you going to travel very silent? Uh, take, take ferries? Are you going to fly? Are you going to... Are you going to go by the cheaper buses? How are you going to travel will affect what those costs are. Think about that. Come up with a number in your budget and stick with that. Some of the airlines have some pretty good specials uh, uh, from time to time, so you can, you can travel pretty cheap. And resorts, uh, some of the resorts are offering some pretty good deals. Uh, this is the high season. Uh, the Christmas Cinelog season is the high season here. So if you travel off season, of course, travel is going to be less expensive, probably. And finally, stuff. There's, there's always in, in your daily life, in your travels, and you go to the mall, you go to the stores, the hardware store. Uh, you're picking up stuff that you need, uh, uh, things to hang things on the wall, uh, batteries, uh, 
for flashlights, uh, suntan lotion, just various different things. You're always spending, I figure I'm spending 1,000, 2,000, sometimes 3,000 pesos a month on stuff. Anyway, I'm sure I forgot a couple things, uh, like how much does a girlfriend cost? Did a video a long time ago, got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of comments. <laughs> I, I took it offline after enough complaints. Anyway, I hope you've been writing some information down, thinking about your, your uh, choice of lifestyle, your budget, how much are you going to have to spend. Uh, I suggest you start with a, with a uh, 50 peso to the U.S. dollar or whatever is reasonable for your country. Don't pick the high end. Pick a middle, middle point because it will vary over time. And figure that out and figure it out. And uh, if you have to cut back, if you don't have any money at the end of the month, when you do that budget, you need to start making adjustments and you need to stick with that budget. Uh, because if you don't, and I've seen it many, many, many times, people living beyond their means. Uh, 50,000, 75,000 pesos sounds like a lot of money. Anyway, safe travels.